We are going to be making a mold for this. Remember, I am not an expert at mold making, so potentially I could screw everything up. So this is the lion sculpture. It's a relief keystone that I'm doing. And you want to make sure that it's nice and clean before we get started. And this one is pretty good. Like I can uh, definitely work with this because we'll be casting this out of cement. And even though it's not perfect on some parts, we'll be sanding various things in order for it to work a little bit better. You do want to make sure that down here looks good. So now that you have it in a different light, that's kind of important to a sculptor is just getting getting these shapes right. I have some extra clay here and that's going to help me with the uh, blending. I already built a box for the sculpture. So it's going to be like uh, a relief so it's very easy to make a mold box. So actually that's the opposite way. So it's just a box and you just put it over and make sure you have um, plenty of space. The only thing that I'm going to do is seal the seams so the silicone doesn't pour out. You see there's like some very big gaps. So we're gonna put some clay there. And there we go, just kinda of do this. I did put some glue in here just to hold it. Put this aside, lift up the ox carefully. And one more seam here. Right there. I am going to do another step. I learned this at a uh, forum. So you, you want to use something to seal it. Now this clay does not have sulfur. If it, your clay has got sulfur, you want to make sure you seal it with this or use another clay. So this is just crystal clear. It's an acrylic coating and I'm going to put it all over my model. Apparently what this does is that it seals it. So even if you have like some sort of sulfur based clay and this stuff smells, so you don't want to breathe, breathe it in. Okay, now that I spray this, you can tell it's pretty hard and crusty. You can probably use uh, the silicone over it. It actually, I kind of like the texture a lot. And you could even do some little minor changes. But now I'm gonna put the box. Make sure there's plenty of space on the sides. And I'm gonna take more of the clay. So we're just putting clay around the outside. I removed the lion and I'm going to put on the inside corners and the edges. This is really going to stop the clay from or from the uh, mold, the rubber to leak out. Okay, for this the box is done and now we are going to be finally putting the polyurethane. What you're going to need is two cups. So two cups and we're going to mix equal portions of the rubber. This is the choice that I tend to use. It's polyurethane. It's not silicone. It's about a hundred and like thirty or forty dollars on Amazon but then you have to pay for shipping so it ends up being a little bit more expensive. 
So it's got part A and part B. And this one, stir before use. So make sure you do this quite a bit. This is the thing that's gonna make it hard. So be pouring it onto here. Now, there's actually on this cup, there's um, these markers on the inside. So I'm going to just pour it to the top of the L. And that's pretty much it. So I have that. Now I'm going to seal this. go same sort of thing I'm going to put it up to the L right there and I have markers on the inside that help me guide it so this one's a lot thicker I have equal parts and I'm just going to put this one onto here and I have a stir a wooden stir I'm just going to get all of this to go down onto here. And I'll leave it like this just for a sec. So now I'm just going to mix this very thoroughly. And it's going to change color. So I'll do this for about five, five minutes or so of mixing. Make sure you get the, the sides. A proper stir would be much better, but I'm not a mold maker, so for me this is not something I do very often. And we're pretty much ready to add the first layer. So you can tell it's kind of like a syrupy consistency. And what we're going to be doing is just we need to get everything on there. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to take a brush and just kind of dab it. Or you can do that and kind of spread it around. But you want to make sure that this layer touches all the little details. So a lot of times it's kind of hard to get details on the eyes, for example. So I want to make sure that all of this kind of gets all over the model. So I'm just kind of dabbing it. Usually if you do this with plenty of rubber, it'll go everywhere. It'll kind of like fill it up. But my goal is not to spend a lot of, of the rubber. So as the polyurethane kind of drips down, it just goes all the way to the base. And what I do is like I try to lift it up and put it more on the surface. I don't need the details in the base. But around the hair and stuff, we need that. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's actually becoming thicker. That's just the way it works. It just kind of like works its way down, but I want to fill in like the eye portion, the nose portion, all the, the little details. So this is a very thin coat. In the past I've made stuff with just two coats, but I think I might need at least three for this one. And I'm going to do this again because there's like polyurethane you know, on the side and the base and I want to get it more on the model try to just get it as much as possible this coat is a detailed coat so okay so the lion has got its first layer this is the detail layer you want to apply it really thinly so I'm gonna let this dry just for a little bit the thing with polyurethane is that 
you have to layer it and it can't you can't wait too long if it becomes fully hard it's useless because it has to tack on to the previous layer so this one is too soft so if you touch here on the side it sticks to your finger that's no good that's uh, too wet what you want to do is wait a few minutes come back touch it and if it be, it's tacky but it doesn't stick to your finger that's the right consistency to put the next layer so I waited about 20-30 minutes and I'm going to be touching this and that's perfect so I already have my rubber here I'm going to do it the exact same thing and we are just going to add one more layer but this layer I'm actually going to add a fiber you definitely don't want to be breathing this in just a fiber it's almost like fiberglass you could probably even use fiberglass for this if it's cut like into um, very thin strands but it helps to have just this then I'm going to get a spoon Actually, I'm just going to use this cup here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of this and so that's what it looks like. It looks like a little bit of cocaine. I'm just going to pour it in. Now I'm going to cover this because I don't want this to be flying. And I'm slowly just going to do this. Just going to, that way. This bulks up the, the rubber. So you can kind of make a shell for this. Just using this if you want it. I don't know if you guys can tell, it's starting to look a little bit like uh, peanut butter. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Just a little bit slowly, I'm just gonna build it up. You can see how thick this is still watering but that's what we want we don't want to add too much we'll add another coat that's going to be thicker in a little bit so I'm going to get something to put it on and the key is that I want to get this onto the parts where I want bolt up in the eyes you see how it doesn't run that's exactly what you want I'm going to take this, all the parts that have creases like the ears, I'm going to add this. The parts on the face are going to be very thin because the just the nature of the rubber around the eyes, anything that we want like this to be kind of smooth. And I believe I have to have a few coats of this. Just gonna, so it's still runny. So you can add it here and kind of just tap it. I think one of the mistakes I made is that I should have had more room to add the mold to the top part because it's hard to reach the brush on there. But I think we're fine. We will find out. Things I find difficult online is finding videos that show this process because um, normally you have to pay companies to do this. It's also very expensive and because of the YouTube channel I'm able to afford this uh, the, the rubber so I figure if I'm going to do something I might as well show you guys and this is a great way you know if you can reproduce one of these things uh, you have an idea, you can put it up on Etsy, you can make a, a decent living from doing commercial sculpture. And I don't even consider this to be commercial sculpture. I mean, it is commercial because I'm getting paid to make this mold and to make this uh, lion. But I also feel that it's a pretty decent living as an 
as a sculptor and nowadays you have a lot of avenues for potential uh, making money online so this was a commission for for this it was a local commission so I'll be able to install this on the house but we have to make a good reproduction and the best thing is that I retain the rights for the sculpture so I can reproduce this and sell it alright same thing we're gonna wait 20 more minutes we're gonna come here and add another coat ready for another coat has been 20 minutes so that's about right so let's mix a new batch this time I'm going to use a scapula because I want to try and like cram it in there and we're also going to use more polyfiber I'm actually going to use a bigger container it makes uh, using the fiber a whole lot easier so I'm going to first pour the this in here it also helps that the these are clear cups this is a very large container but try to get as much rubber onto the inside as possible Okay, so now I'm going to pour this one and scrape it all around. And this. So I'm going to take this slowly, add another scoop. And we're going to add more, but I'm going to mix it really quick. I'm going to put in a mask as well. Okay, finished mixing this outside. This is what it looks like after a little bit. That's uh, just a little bit. I'm going to add one more cup. I want to really thicken this up. Here we go. So I'm going to mix this outside. I'll be right back. And I'm simply just going to take this and I'm going to put it into spots and kind of level it out. I don't, definitely a little bit hard to see, but I'm taking it. I'm going to use as much as possible of the rubber. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this, but I'm kind of just trying to even it out. Now you can actually shape the rubber, so that's perfect. I'm going to start at the back here. Just kind of flatten it. We don't want any like undercuts because when we pull it from the mother mold, it'll be a whole lot more difficult if there's like sharp edges. So just look for the the parts that I think are kind of like inside they'll be hard to remove you don't need to get this everywhere but the parts that I kind of want to cover up are like the eyes you want to kind of have a clear clear line it shouldn't even look like a lion after a while it should be like just a shell and now under the chin, I want it to be almost like straight going up because when I pull off the, the mother mold, I don't want it to get stuck. So an experienced mold maker, which I'm not, would have all of this under consideration from the get-go. Right here, just kind of dab it on. The chin.
and you might even like use your hands to kind of push it, smooth it out. So it's starting to resemble more of what I want, like nice and smooth, but thick. And because we waited 20 minutes between coats, it should adhere pretty well. Just make sure you kind of push it, but you don't want to change the geometry of the sculpture. Make sure you get behind behind the ears as well. That could be a weak spot when you pull off the mold. This is pretty much a very smooth mold now and i still have this case on so the next step is for you to dry it out but see any imperfections try and kind of like smooth. i'm going to wait maybe a day this is going to harden up and then i am going to add about here with plaster plaster of paris and then we're going to remove it all and we're going to do our first casting we have waited quite a few hours and you see this is like hard to the touch this is essentially a shell, but it's a flexible shell. So in order to do our casting, it's probably a good idea to make what's called a mother mold. That is a much stiffer mold that will just basically hold the shape of this. And this box, if I fill it with plaster up to here, it'll be very easy to make castings. So like a hard shell but usually it separates pretty well and I have the plaster right here I mix it so with my hand it's much easier so I'm just gonna put it off on one side here and I'm gonna see if I can fill it in and it should just kind of level off all out. The good thing is uh, plaster is very cheap. It's already like hardening up. But I think I might have to mix a little bit more. Yep, I'm gonna have to mix just a little bit more. All right, I will be right back and I'm gonna mix in little bit more of this. Now I'm just going to keep pouring it, cover the entire thing. And I'm just going to wipe it all. You see how like thick it's becoming? This is the stuff I usually also make casts out of because it's so inexpensive and I like the classical style as well. And now it's just going to get very hard and there's a working time. So um, some dents on it. So we're now going to remove this and it might be easier said than done. The uh, mother mold has broken off, but I don't think that should be. You can tell all the plaster there. There goes one chunk, and two chunks.
take the blade and the part that sticks, just try and, and cut it. There we go. And the polyurethane is just really, really thick. So, so I still haven't removed this, but that's the mother mold. That's that thickening, the one we put with some of the fiber, and then there's the original very thin mold. So it layered it up very, very well. Hey, there we go. Mother mold is done. That's it. That's a pretty successful mother mold. Only thing that I might glue it. Just a little chunk here. Oh man. See, I can remove some of this clay. I think it's getting in the way. There we go. It pulled a lion from the original armature. That's kind of funny. Hopefully, I don't damage the lion. Pull this back. There we go. I think it's coming on. There we go. Not bad. So, not too much damage. I should be able to fix this up. What I like about the screwdriver, it's like a very blunt and soft parts where it's like the highest. If you look it up to the light, you have to be very careful. Like right over here, there is a little bit of an imperfection. It's too thin. And what happens in the past is I have ripped up the the mold just because how, how thick and thin it was. So there are sections that are very thin, so you have to be very careful. But that's pretty much what the negative looks like of the lion. And I am going to clean all of this stuff out. If you have any uh, questions about mixing plaster, I've done it before on several videos. So I refer to that. I think the Hulk or the, uh, the Hellboy one, I went into it. But remember, I'm not really a mold maker. So I'm learning how to do this. But I kind of put this stuff up so you guys can learn from my mistakes. And I made quite a few. Slowly drip it in. And I think it, I might have over mixed. Yeah, I mixed too much plaster. So it's going to be kind of solid. Keep in mind you want to, you want this to be. Oh, actually, this is just about right. If I want to make it solid. So when it goes into the wall, it's got to be solid. And that's about what we need. Right. I'm going to shake it and then um, put something here just to kind of level it up. And I think I'm just going to use some of the old clay. But first, I want to be able to kind of shake it and vibrate it a bit. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want all the air bubbles and all the plaster to go into parts that need it. A couple of minutes, I'm going to take these two screws, put them like this. That way I can hang this on a wall. And you have two choices. When it becomes a little hard, you can write your name and put the hooks. But you can also scoop the inside so it's lighter, so you can put it up on a wall. It's not going to be this really big, heavy object. The plaster is still wet enough that we can take it and just kind of remove a little bit, mainly for weight. You don't have to do this, you can just keep it solid if you want, but I'm just, I want to do this. I'm just putting it on the, the mother mold. Parts that have required just a little bit of this. I'm just going to take it, put it on the side.
simply just going to drop it, drop it in like that. And then what I do is like I push in the plaster around the screw while it's still wet. Okay guys, it's time to pull this off. It's still uh, hot from being, from curing, but I have the number here. I've written down, you can kind of scratch it. I actually, I should have weighed it a little bit more to, to write that in. And this is the number one. And pull the, there we go. So that separates easy from the mother mold. And this is the mother mold. We're going to put it aside. Okay, let's pull this off. We have to be very careful. There we go. It's coming off. Try not to put a lot of... There we go. Let's see, it's still hot. And that's it. That's the first copy. So let's look at it to see if it came out okay. Um, this first section, you can see it's just uh, not that perfect. But the good thing about having the plaster this soft is we can, for example, do this to the edges and this is going to take care of a lot of the, the issues you don't want them to have such a hard edge you want to be able to not cut things when you lay it down or something so this part was a little damaged on the side I don't know exactly why This part is a little bit messed up over here, but I think we're able to really fix this. So you can take some rasping tools, even create textures at this point. You can smooth it out, have different textures. I'm just running a little bit of a, a rasp. Yeah, I think it did come out pretty good. The starkness of the color is a little bit hard. But I think once you patina this, it's going to look great. I think it came out really well. But that's our first copy. And um, you, I'm just going to go around and clean it up. Sand it. Do a, a few things here and there. But this is pretty much it. That's our first casting of the Lion Keystone. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.